Week 11 Sunday, tons of takeaways, including a beatdown from the Dallas Cowboys of the 8-1, and one, now 8-2 and two Minnesota Vikings. Maybe the game Matt and I got the most wrong so far this season when making our picks. Some ineptitude with the offenses of the New England Patriots and the New York Jets, and a really good one seeing the ball slung around the yard in Los Angeles with the Chiefs upending the Chargers narrowly on Sunday night football. All that more coming up on today's. Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Get your Twitter Tuesday questions in for tomorrow's episode. We'll also break down everything that happens on Monday Night Football from Mexico City on Tuesday's episode. And then we'll start previewing the Thursday Thanksgiving games this week. Already Thanksgiving, already the holidays. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is presented by Prize picks. Prize picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on that entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com. Promo code locked on. I do want to say, Matt, thanks for being a trooper and jumping in here. I know you came ill over the weekend, and I lean on you so much every day throughout the year. It's only fair that, uh, that maybe I take the reins and speak a little more today and you can interject whenever you need and whenever you feel well <laughs> enough to do so. Yeah, I'm, I'm hurting a little, to be honest with you. And you definitely don't lean on me, that's for sure. But you're 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 riding the uh, the train here. You're driving the train today for sure. Uh, fighting a fever. This is one of nine scheduled uh, shows I'm supposed to do today. I've, I've got out of one or two clammy, feverish. So not not my A game, but bringing it for you guys. That's rough for the holidays. Hopefully you're feeling good by the time you uh, are find around around family and <laughs> yeah, all right. that. Uh, game time decision, Matt pulling through, G- got a shot of tour at all in the rear and he's ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Game time. Let's roll. Uh, so the, we asked the question. Uh, uh, we, I think it was the statement was something like, and I don't remember which one of us said it, but it was something like, Maybe this is the easiest line of the week with the home Vikings at eight and one getting points against the visiting Dallas Cowboys and how wrong we were, Matt, 40 to three beat down. This is the biggest road win ever for the Dallas Cowboys. 40 to three, the Cowboys beat the Minnesota Vikings, beating up on them on both lines of scrimmage, which is really the biggest takeaway for me in this game. Seeing Micah Parsons and uh, Sam Williams and Fowler, I mean, it's like everybody involved just getting after Kirk Cousins and, and made their offense inoperable. Uh, w- what a performance by the Dallas Cowboys against the Vikings in week 11. Unbelievably impressive. I mean, seven sacks. Um, we know Cousins is two different players when pressured and not. That was unbelievably apparent in this one he was terrible but also was under a lot of duress of course um it, it it's funny i mean the big lead up to this game was oh my gosh my vikings are being disrespected how could they be a home dog when they're eight and one i mean even though dallas is good nobody respects the bikes well vegas sometimes knows stuff and i know that they got beat bad in two games this one in the eagles but Minnesota's eight and two with a negative uh, point differential right now, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> eight yeah, two. and the two best teams they've played. Blue yeah. yeah, I mean, that's who they're going to see in the playoffs. I mean, yeah. Cowboys and Eagles, you know, I mean, that doesn't bode well. Uh, five quarterback hits for Micah Parsons with his two wow. sacks. Two sacks from Dorrance Armstrong, a sack from Jaron Curse. There was a sack from Dexter Fowler. There was a sack from Demarcus Lawrence. I mean, it was just... Uh, pretty unbelievable. And then um, on the offensive side of the ball for the Cowboys, Tony Pollard, just, just going we crazy talk about as it. a runner and a receiver, nearly 200 total yards there, 80 yards rushing 5.3 yards per carry there ripped off some big ones, 15 carries for 80 yards, then six more catches for uh, 109 yards. All six of his targets were caught two touchdowns, big plays hitting the corner. I mean, Pollard just looks like he's a, a different speed than Zeke Elliott and, and basically the rest of the offenses and defenses on the field recently. 
Yeah, and there's a lot of very, very strong rumors that Odell's going to end up in Dallas, and Pollard all of a sudden looks like a, a McCaffrey-type weapon. You know, I mean, just dangerous at everything he does, versatile, a mismatch galore. Dallas might win the whole thing. Yeah, that's that's you come away with this game very impressed. But yeah. again, week to week, the NFL is chaos. And you see Dallas lay an egg, come back and, and play amazing. You see the Minnesota Vikings beat the Buffalo Bills, right? Who was supposed to be the best team in the NFL going into week 10. And then they lay an egg and get completely destroyed by the Dallas Cowboys. So I don't know what the hell to think, Matt. And next week it might be just uh, more on its ear and, and another, you know, a, a complete shock when we see what happens. But the other thing here with the Cowboys is Dak Prescott and the efficiency there. Too. Very few balls hit yeah, the ground. The touchdown great. passes. Um, I'm sure Dallas Cowboys fans are very happy with what they saw Sunday. Oh, yeah. I mean, how could you not be? I mean, we thought this would be an even fight, and it wasn't even close. Nope, not at all. Uh, there was an even fight here. Let's go to the let's go to the the Jets and the Patriots in the AFC yeah. East. And uh both teams still a couple games over 500 now, six and four Jets, six and four Patriots. 10-3 the final score here. The only touchdown of the game was Marcus Jones to hit an 84-yard punt return at the end to give the Patriots the W. The Patriots, when that ball was kicked into the air, had a 48% a chance of winning the game. And by the time he scored, they had a 98% chance of winning the game. So that's how big that one play was in that game and just awful quarterback play from both sides. And, uh, I, you know, and, and somehow Zach Wilson looked worse than than Mac Jones with the Jets offense right. in that game. And the Jets have a problem if, if Zach Wilson's going to play like that because their record is too good to have quarterback play that bad right now. Yeah, absolutely. And it makes you think maybe these New York teams aren't really in it. And as usual, the Patriots are. What a Belichick game, though. You know, I mean, you just stymie a young quarterback, you know, give him nothing, make life extremely difficult on him. And then you win it on a special teams touchdown by your second round pick that's a slot corner and was the best returner in college last year. And people are like, that's a little early to draft him. Well, not really. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, he, I have a positive, though, for these teams. So oh. how about that? just to put a nice little spin on your crappy young quarterbacks? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mac and Zach are really, really bad. And I really think the Jets might need to think about putting Wilson on the bench while they're six and four. I mean, Flacco has to be better. Um, but think about the division, the Dolphins and the Bills. When Allen and Tua were basically – year and a half into the league. Nobody liked them either. Remember? Yeah. Nobody yeah. liked yeah, and nobody liked Justin Fields they were bad. About 4 or 5 weeks ago. Right, right. I mean, same draft class, you know, like it, let's be a little more patient. I've never been a Zach Wilson fan and frankly Mac Jones, they were my two least favorite from that class. But Tua and Allen when they were 20 starts or 25 starts in had way more questions and answers and now they're in the MVP race. Yes. Patience. Patience yeah. is key there. That doesn't mean if you're the Jets I'm still and you're trying worried. to make the playoffs. <laughs> I'm still worried. Me. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no offense to be set to be had in this game, but these are two good defenses. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's get to the other New York team next. The Giants okay. that fall to the Lions. Could the Giants be uh, on the precipice of falling apart? And will it matter for their playoff um, for making the playoffs? It could definitely matter if they get to the playoffs, but it's seven and three. Now the Giants still in a really good spot to make the playoffs. We'll get to that game next. We'll talk Sunday night football as well. Mahomes versus Herbert, which is always a lot of fun in prime time and the chiefs, uh, what it means for them to have come out <laughs> on top there and, and how they're looking in the AFC playoff picture next. Today's episode brought to you in part by total wine and more this holiday season. Find what you love at total wine and more. With so many great bottles to choose from, it's easy to find a new favorite Cabernet or Chardonnay or maybe a little sparkling wine for the holidays or the perfect gifts for everyone on your list with some help from a friendly guide. All that with the, the uh, and all that with the confidence of knowing you found something special for the lowest price, which is key. You don't need to go anywhere else. Love what you find only at Total Wine and More curbside pickup and deliver, delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more, drink responsibly, and be 21. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want, wherever you want it, from a community of local hosts. If a host has a car and it is available, you can drive it with 
Turo. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. You just need to get from point A to B, run some errands, and you need some extra wheels for the day. Uh, they've got economy cars that are available from numerous hosts at Turo. But how about that special occasion? You want to show up to the holidays in a uh, luxury car or a classic, really make that special event or birthday pop with the ride that you pull up in. You can find that at Turo or maybe book a spacious SUV or minivan for that family road trip. Browse a huge selection of vehicles, any occasion or budget across the U.S., U.K., Canada, and coming soon to Australia. Many Turo hosts can even deliver the car right to you. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. Terms, conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Thanks again, everybody, for making Peacock and Williamson your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard <laughs> and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Let's go to Sunday Night Football, which was a whole lot of fun. That's the one yeah. freshest in our minds because we watched it last, and it's the only game you're watching and focusing in on the big throws being made by Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes, and the ball that Patrick Mahomes dropped down the right sideline was just a ridiculous throw. So fun to watch these quarterbacks. But again, we've seen the Chargers jump out to a lead, play good in the first half, and fall apart in the second half with only – um, one score in the fourth quarter in the second half of that game and seeing 17 points get put on the board by the Kansas City Chiefs. Like, this is a theme for those Chargers. And now the Chargers are down to uh, a 500 record at 5-5 five and five, and clearly behind the Chiefs and now in a fight for a wild card seed in a wild card berth in the AFC playoff picture where the Chiefs now at 8-2 and two are in a great spot to uh, challenge for that one seed in the the AFC with a 30 27 win over the chargers and not that we should be surprised, but Kansas city is going to win the West and Reed wins another division game. And Mahomes is frankly the best player on the planet right now. I mean, Mahomes is ridiculous. I think he's running away with MVP honors. And this was just another example, you know, uh, Herbert played really, really well. And he throws that late touchdown and he's pumping his fists and he's thrilled and Mahomes is like, you left me like two minutes on the clock. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I saw mean, that on the clock. Yeah. I was like, well, I know for sure the Chiefs are going to score. Now are the Chargers going to be able to score again. That was right, 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 right. I mean, it's like, it, great job, Justin. You played well. Everyone knows I'm a Herbert fan. And, of course, he loses Mike Williams after his first catch. I mean, some of these guys you just can't rely on. That was oh, another theme. You know, early, it was so impactful. Seeing Allen yeah. and seeing Mike Williams made that catch, I was like, okay, it turns out that makes a huge difference to have those guys back. One <laughs> yeah. catch, beautiful toe tapper on the sideline, then Mike Williams is out again. He's out again, right. And not that Tony's at the same level as as Williams, but he gets hurt early on. They are, they didn't have Juju. Uh, Valdez Scantling caught one pass late in the game. Uh, who was they had another receiver that was out? And it doesn't matter for that yeah, team, though. It's I mean, that's a difference. Justin Watson. And yeah. Cool. And they play, they play a lot of double tight end sets, a lot less 11 personnel. They run the football. Mahomes makes everybody better. Kelsey scores three touchdowns, of course. You yeah. know, it makes it look easy, even so, fighting with Derwin James. Yeah, Derwin James holding them on every single play. Totally. <laughs> right. That, and that, that was – it was perfect, too, because Derwin James got finally called for it late in the game. Mm -hmm. And then so what happened? Now you know you got a free release on the next play to Travis Kelsey. Boom, touchdown. Boom, touchdown. And I think the Chargers are – just trying to keep their head above water, you know, maybe get into the, the wild card. And I think Collinsworth said, I could see December being really good for the Chargers, Bosa and those guys come back. That's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. But there are two different levels. I mean, the, the Chiefs, it doesn't matter what adversity they have. If they have Reed, Mahomes, Kelsey, and Chris Jones, who was awesome in this game yeah. too, they can beat anybody. Yep. And absolutely. usually will. That has been – proven now by the Kansas City Chiefs and so the Chargers with some work to do they got to get those guys back and they've got to still win a whole bunch of games to get into the playoffs they can't go three straight years without getting into the playoffs because you got to start firing people oh I, I think so yeah you are uh, the Chargers despite all the, the the rough luck they've had with the injuries this year some quick insight Matt from you on that Steelers Bengals game the Steelers had a lead uh love seeing the picket to Pickens connection they did miss on one that would have been a, a walk-in touchdown for for Pickens um uh, but the Steelers come up short and 20 second half points for the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals win this one 37 30. Yeah. And 
the second, this was kind of a tale of two halves. You were very, very competitive through the first half. Steelers actually had a lead going in. Um, that's the most first quarter points they've scored all year, 20, which is pretty sad. And this is the most points they've scored in like a calendar year, 30, which is also pretty sad. But there was a lot of good from a Pittsburgh perspective. Um, but the second half was dismal and Pickett missed a lot of throws. My biggest takeaway, not to the Mahomesian level, but Burrow was unbelievable in this game. I mean, the Steelers threw so much at them. The, the stadium was rocking. They had Minka and Cam and Watt and all their guns, and they did damage early. And then Burrow was just cool and calm and picking people apart, even when Mixon was out, even without Chase. I mean, very impressive. I want to go to the Washington Commanders and the Houston Texans here, not because of the final score. And most yeah. people pick the, the Commanders to win this one, 23 to 10. They did. But Ron Rivera just being a stabilizing force and has the Commanders right now at six and five over 500. If the 49ers lose on Monday Night Football, the Commanders are suddenly seven seed in the NFC. And asked about the decision to go to Taylor Heineke as your starting quarterback and not Carson Wentz, his answer was one word winning. And, you know, 15 of 27, 181 yards. It doesn't look great, but they're winning with Taylor Heineke. Is there some magic to his leaderiness that is leading the the commanders to wins? In a way, I mean, I think he's figured out how his team can compete. The Texans stink. I mean, we know that. We don't need to dig into them. I mean, they're clearly number 32, right? I mean, they're a dismal organization, and Mm -hmm. there's not much even to – you know, be excited about. I mean, the one thing you liked was Damian Pierce and he had 10 carries for eight yards. Um, (laughs) It's not that hard to make a game plan against the Texans right now. No, no. But back to Rivera, I mean, uh, we, we touched on the giants a little, I think the commanders are now the better team than the giants in the East. I mean, whether that gets you in the playoffs or not remains to be seen, but another effort of 40 carries. I mean, I can't harp on that enough that, Some of these teams that aren't overly talented or have Mahomes or Allen, you run the ball 40 times, and I know this is a Texans, but they just did it against the Eagles the week before, makes you really hard to play against. And Washington's defense is coming around, led by that front four. Guys like Jamin Davis are much better in their second year, too. So it's a formula to compete. We tease the Giants. Let's get into the New York Giants. Are are the Giants in a spot where the house of cards is kind of going to fall just because of uh, the talent level they have and losing some more pieces, putting a Dory Jackson back to return a kick and now losing him uh, for the year to, to an injury like that is I, you can't like that coaching decision. Uh, Daniel Jones threw for 341 yards against that lions defense, but a 31, 18 (laughs) loss to the lions. Look out. Don't look. I mean, look out for those Detroit Lions that are on a winning streak here. Still only four wins on the season, but the New York Giants got jumped out to such a big lead. It would be really hard. It'd be catastrophic for them. They would have to lose, you know, almost every game down the stretch to not make the playoffs at this point. Um, But I I have a I can't imagine the Giants winning a playoff game as constructed, um, uh, especially when so much now is going to be put on Saquon Barkley. Wondale Robinson torn ACL out for the year. Um, Kenny Alday, you know, really just a non-factor, even though he's healthy now. I, I just don't know what this team is going to look like, and you're just running Saquon Barkley into the ground. One and a half yards per carry in this game is even going to be healthy by the time you get to January if you're the New York Giants. So a <laughs> little bit of a dubious point in the season for the New York Giants. Can they Can they keep it going, or do we start to see them fall apart? I think they're in the middle of falling apart. And by the way, great job by Detroit. You've won three in a row. I mean, it's a lot of Jamal Williams, which trust me, us DeAndre Swift fantasy owners can't stand, whatever. Yeah, Yeah. props to Jamal Williams for leading the league in touchdowns right now. Three more touchdown runs in this game. 17 carries for 64 yards. And yeah, he's become the the main back there and, and the main point scorer for that Detroit Lions offense, which nobody had projected. Yeah, and guys, some of their young foundational pieces like St. Brown and Hutchinson or, you know, look like foundational pieces, but you know, the giants, I think are the bigger story. And I do think they are, if they're in the playoffs, an easy bet against in the first round. And I'm not sure if they even make it at this point. Um, But the key to me here is they can only play one way. I mean, when this was 17, six at the half and yes, Daniel Jones's stat line was quite good, 
but he ended up with a 39 QBR and two interceptions and they can't play that way. They can't play from behind. Um, and what's remarkable is you mentioned Wandell Robinson, who's been a favorite of mine. Like he's been sitting on my fantasy bench all year, just for this moment when he's finally the man there. And it's the most, most cursed position group room in the world. You know, like uh, as soon as somebody does anything good as a wide receiver for the giants, they're hurt or, you know, I mean, it, it's remarkable the bad luck they've had there. I mean, what if and they had I, Sterling Shepard, you know? Sorry to interrupt, but I think no. it was beyond luck, too, because of the turf in New York. And, and a lot of players have been speaking out about it recently, and that is the worst turf in the league right now as far as injuries go in New York. And you've got two teams playing home games there on it with the Jets Unexcusable. and the Giants, and we're seeing it hit their own guys. And I think wide receivers have been getting kind of hurt worse, right? You're cutting and, yeah, and yeah. a little bit more uh, high-speed – uh, maneuvers on your on your knee especially uh, on that turf so um that's something that absolutely has to be looked at in the off season i don't know if they can do it mid season but you know you're hurting your own team as well as you know opposing teams coming in right i mean it's different when you watch an overseas game and you see really bad turf like we did you know this past week and i understand that i'm not okay with it hopefully mexico city's okay they're notorious for bad turf too yeah. But this is a home stadium for two teams in the Big Apple. Like, it should be beautiful. Oh, it should be the best turf. Right, right, two right. Home teams in New York, big market teams, you know. Um, Aiden Hutchinson, though, you, you mentioned that interception. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a little stat that I saw, which uh, the, my favorite part of the stat is the name that is now alongside Aiden Hutchinson. Aiden Hutchinson with his five sacks and two interceptions through ten games, the first player to do that since – um, Leslie O'Neill, Leslie, O'Neal, oh, wow. name I haven't heard in a very long time. So, congratulations. Hutchinson's got good ball skills, like put him at tight end, right? Right, yeah, maybe he'll do the Vrabel stuff later in life, <laughs> yeah. you know. I mean, that absolutely makes sense. Um, side note that's not related to this game, but it's a little bit of a theme from this weekend, especially fantasy nugget. Just mentioned Robinson, Mike Williams, Tony, those guys. Well, Kyle Pitts is now out for the year, too. I mean. It, 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 torn MCL, you know, like, oh man, it's just some of these guys just can't quite get on track. Wow, yeah, that's a bummer. A couple of notes from from injuries from that Falcons Bears game. Uh, probably not playoff implications there, mm -hmm. but the Falcons trying to hang on close to that wild card picture, and the Eagles hanging on to beat the Indianapolis Colts. And a few more notes from Week Eleven next. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. How easy is it? Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy. You're not even picking a whole daily fantasy team. And you're not competing against other people or a pool of sharks. It's just you against the projections available at Prize Picks. All you do is you pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. Prize picks projections are any sport you watch, too. This is daily fantasy. Every single day you can play prize picks. Of course, NFL projections are there. NBA, college sports. There is uh, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, even disc golf and cricket. You name it, you can find projections at prize picks. All you do is download the prize picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. And first time users can receive a 100% instant. Deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Prize Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. So the newly revamped interior of the of the Philadelphia Eagles defensive line came to play. Linval Joseph and Ngama Kinsu were uh, were in the house as the Eagles came back with 14 fourth quarter points to beat the Indianapolis Colts 17-16. Yeah, and I think the Colts deserve some credit. You know, I mean, their their defense is playing very well. And I don't want to say Jeff Saturday is a phenomenal coach or whatever. Coach of the year. And in the third uh, quarter of this game, it was like Jeff Saturday, coach of the year conversation. Yeah. And I think people remember uh, that I actually made three bets this weekend was uh, I, I was harping on this Friday that the bills and the Eagles are going to blow out inferior competition. Well, I was right about half of that. And then I also took the under on Patriot jets, which was a slam dunk. That was yeah, great. That was a, that was a great move by you. But, you you dug yeah. down hard. <laughs> but I like that the Colts played close to and played this thing close. Um, a couple things here. I, I, I still think Matt Ryan's an NFL quarterback, 
but he held the team back. I mean, like when, when the Eagles finally stopped, you know, was able to Taylor had a nice first drive or two, and then it was nothing, you know, Sue and Joseph that they designed played a lot and were shutting down the interior run and making them throw. Well, the Colts really can't do that. And and that's, that's apparent. The other part of it with uh, not just the defensive interior for, the Eagles was the edge guys feasting as well. And, and they were all over the place. So really that's what was the key in this game is I think that Philadelphia Eagles defensive line, the offense figuring out in the second half. And um, that's what good, good, de- good teams do is they figure out a way to win. Yeah. And the Eagles did here have the NFL's best record at nine and one. Yeah. So I'm not particularly worried about Philadelphia. I think they will be just fine, but a little bit of a transition stage with them. A couple new defensive yeah. tackles, lose a tight end, you know, but they're plenty of time to one. Figure it out. Yeah. Try to keep yourself healthy for the playoff run and, and, and keep that one seed, get that bye week. Exactly. Exactly. Well said. Uh, you mentioned the Bills, and they did end up. Did they end up covering that number? What was the number on the Bills Browns game? I can't remember. Thirty-one uh, twenty-three ended up being the final with the Bills in Detroit beating those Cleveland Browns. I think I got it at seven and a half. I'm trying to remember of it. Whatever it was, I won. So okay, good. Yeah, yeah, got it by that half. That half is always key. So yeah, winning by eight were the the Buffalo Bills at seven and three now over the four and seven Browns, and the Browns now turn the page to Deshaun Watson. Yeah, and Brissett was not the reason that this team's three and seven, nor the reason that they lost this game. I wonder if he'll get a shot somewhere else or what what his future is. But he's a good player. Uh, Amari Cooper's really emerged. Najoku's back. But we know that this is a running team. And if Nick Chubb's going to go 14 for 19, it's kind of like the Saquon Barkley conversation we just had, that that's not enough. Um, Bill's defense was pretty darn good in this from what I saw. Um, They had a couple injuries as well. But they're figuring things out. But the second half just belonged to them in a big way. You know, it's funny. Some garbage time points at the end. We're getting the holidays and winter and colder weather. And it was and this year, more than most recently, because of how pass happy the league has become, it was like, oh, this is the revenge of the running backs and the running games mm-hmm. in the NFL. And we've seen a lot of that throughout the first part of the season. And then you get games with, you know, Chubb and and Barkley and Jonathan Taylor, and they get stymied. And this is the cold weather season when the running games were supposed to elevate. And then this was the week we saw that all get kind of tossed on its head again as well. Good point. And, so I don't know. I don't know what to take away from that if there's anything big picture, but it's just uh, interesting. It is interesting. It's that's certainly something to kind of monitor throughout the league right now. You mentioned Kyle Pitts. Really unfortunate. I mean, oh. the, the most disappointing sophomore season, I think, in the NFL, especially if you take out those rookie quarterbacks, the first rounders from the 2021 draft is Kyle Pitts. And then Justin Fields went down in this game, too. Like, th- that's the, the <coughs> other side of this thing with Justin Fields and what his usage has been and his rushing total. He ran the ball 14 times for 75 yards in the first half the first and then half, was yeah. you know, limping around. Like, I, I don't think there were hamstring strains, but I think maybe he was even cramping a little bit. He couldn't run in the second half like he was in the first half. You start to take a toll on your body there uh, with, with all the carries that Justin Fields has seen. And then gets tackled because he didn't have that burst to to get out of bounds and get away from a defender gets tackled on his shoulder his non-throwing shoulder but might have a, a little bit of a, a shoulder injury there as well for Justin Fields so that's unfortunate for the Bears because that develop but you know as far as score goes you want to see development from Fields and still lose some games and, and keep that draft capital which is a big win for the Bears but not at the expense of getting Fields hurt yeah and I guess we'll comment on that later in the week not sure what his status is haven't seen that one yet um, neither quarterback was did a whole lot through the air, but this game was kind of exactly what we thought it was going to be. I mean, I think there's some numbers that are very telling is that Chicago ran the ball 41 times, but only had 14 completions. Atlanta ran the ball 33 times, but had 13 completions. Yeah. And I think you got to call out Cordero Patterson. I mean, he's as good a kickoff returner as the league's ever seen. Yep. Yeah. Congrats on him for his ninth, I believe, return. I think game. so. It's the record. It's the record. Yeah. For kickoffs. Yeah. More this week, getting ready for Thanksgiving football as well. We will recap Monday Night Football tomorrow. Get your Twitter questions in as well at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Back with you then, right here, Peacock and Williamson.